What is your name, please? My name is Bob Harmon. My name is Bob Harmon. My name is Bob Harmon. Only one of these gentlemen is the real Bob Harmon. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth. To Tell the Truth is brought to you this evening by Anison, the headache tablet to relieve pain. So relax tension, calm nerves. Anison. And now here's our host, Bud Collier. Thank you, and welcome once again to the Tell the Truth. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Bye. Bye. As beautiful a group of people as anyone will ever see. Uh, now, in front of you, you'll find an envelope. Open it up, if you will, and follow along with his first story with me. I'll read from my copy. I, Bob Harmon, am a university student. To help put myself through college, I hold two rather unrelated part-time jobs. Weekends and holidays, I appear as a professional wrestler. As a wrestler, I always play the part of the bad guy and am known as the baby-faced villain of the Midwest. With what remains of my spare time, I breed, raise, and sell Persian cats. Signed, Bob Harmon. <laughs> Finally, these three gentlemen all claim to be Bob Harmon. Suppose we start the questioning with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you, bud. Um, number two, who's the world's champion of professional wrestling? Well, uh, it was Lou Thez until yesterday, but he gave up his title to Gene Kaminsky in a match last night. Ha-ha. Uh -huh. uh, number three, how, um, in order to win in a wrestling match, what do you have to do? Well, in professional wrestling, it would be either by a fall or what? Well, there would be no other way to win a professional oh. match. Well, number one, what kind of a match is it when the shoulders have to hit the mat three times? It's a one-fall match. That's a one-fall match? Right. Well, then how come the shoulders three times? Three times, three counts. Oh, one, two, three, that's to stay down right. for three counts. See, I read a little, but not well. <laughs> uh, number two is... <laughs> Indeed. Yes, number two, I, I watch wrestling a great deal, and uh, sometimes to me it looks like the minuet. Uh, I mean, it looks perfectly choreographed. They're screaming. If you really did that to each other, you wouldn't su survive the night, would you, number two? Yes. You would survive the night? Why, number two? Strong constitution. I see. All right. Well, you're not going to tell me anything. Number three, what is Bruno San Martino's specialty? Bruno San Martino's specialty is yeah. uh, good... Honest wrestling. Ah, that's a good answer, and I think true. Number uh, one, uh, about your pussycats, uh, uh, what do you do about hairballs? <laughs> there's really not much. <laughs> I don't mean you personally, number one, but... Uh... Uh, there's really not much you can do about them. It's a natural thing, and they dispose of them in a natural way. Oh, do they, number one? I don't want to pursue that. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number one, what is a half Nelson? Number one? Yeah. Say? A half Nelson uh, is a one arm. It's a... Um, it's different than a full Nelson, and it only has, you use one arm instead of Thank two. Thank you. Number two, what is a hammer lock? That's with the arm behind the back. Thank you. Number three, um, is, is, do, you, do you ever get hurt wrestling, or is it really, as, as Orson said, a sort oh, of a yes. minuet? You do. Oh, yes. Number two, what is the distinguishing characteristic of a Manx cat? The Manx cat has no tail. Uh, number one, what is the distinguishing characteristic of a Maltese? Maltese is a short-haired, dark, usually a dark-colored cat. Uh, number three, what is the distinguishing characteristic of a Siamese? Of a Siamese would be its short hair and its beautiful face, blue point. Blue point? Thank you. Tom Poston. Uh, I'm wondering, do you know anything about Siamese cats, number one? No, I strictly raise Persians. How about you, number two? Do you know anything about it? Not very much. Not, well, it's, there's that old thing about the, why their tail is broken. Oh, number oh. one, what is the greatest danger that a professional wrestler can... Uh, can, it, can, can encounter in a professional match with an audience? The fans themselves, I would say. Yeah, I, I've heard the hat pin uh, <laughs> danger is the greatest. Number two, when, when a wrestler speaks of tearing, what does that mean in a professional match, tearing? Well, tearing uh, refers to facial ripping at uh, hair, clothing, mm. and also your skin. 
Yeah, murder. Number three, have you ever done any college wrestling? Yes. How does the, what is the position you're in when you begin a wrestling match in a college bout? Depends on the style you're wrestling. Well, say, uh, well, in the standard Olympic wrestling... Uh... Well, there are two styles. One would be the Greco-Roman, which is started from a kneeling position, the other freestyle. That's it. Time for you to mark your ballot in whatever style you wish, but just mark them right. Mark them without any consultation, of course, and without changing your vote once you have marked. Vote, if you will, for number one, number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. A ballot's all marked, panel? Very well, Tom, for whom did you vote? What? I voted for number one. Uh, uh, he, I thought number two looked the part, and uh, number three certainly knew the most about wrestling from the questions I asked. But uh, tearing, I think, refers to uh, rendering an opponent uh, uh, actually tearing his muscles and fibers of his body. It only happens when they get really angry. That was number one. <laughs> Peggy, Peggy would like you to repeat that last no. <laughs> Peggy, for whom did you vote? Well, number three said that the cap were blue points. I think those are oysters. That are blue <laughs> I do. I think cats are seal points or something like that. I voted for number two because of all that terrible daring. <laughs> that was it. Orson Bean. Well, they were all good. Uh, I, I was all set to vote for number three, but I just got tattooed off him but I, because I figured number two really had a baby face, and if he's billing himself as a baby face villain of the Midwest. But at the last minute, I decided to vote for number one. <laughs> what, what, is, what is your poor number one doing? That uh, number one is uh, tied up in a Portuguese twist. It's just, uh, hold. Kitty, your vote. I voted for number two because number two looks has he has a baby face and he also has a face a little bit like a pussycat. Uh, <laughs> I, have a, I have a feeling he's not going to be very happy about you after you leave the show. All right, that's all the votes into the minds made up. Let's find out now which one of these gentlemen in truth is Bob Harmon. Will the real Bob Harmon please stand up? No. Uh. <laughs> Continued safe success to you. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Tom Delaney and I'm a freelance photographer. <laughs> and number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Randolph Schwartz. I'm associated with Salvatore Ferragamo's shoes. Checking the score, gentlemen, we find you did well, because a 50% fooling job on this panel any day or night of the week is a good one, believe me. And that means it's twice $250 for a total of $500 coming your way, and our sincere thanks to you. Good night, and God bless you. Our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Becky Goodman Kerr. My name is Becky Goodman Kerr. My name is Becky Goodman Kerr. Follow along with your copies of this one, if you will, panel. I, Becky Goodman Kerr, am a college senior and a member of a team which has won for our school a national intercollegiate title. I am the only girl member of our championship meat judging team. I am qualified to examine meat and classify it, prime, choice, etc., as determined by its age, conformation, and quality. Upon graduation, I will go to work as an official meat grader for the United States Department of Agriculture. This will be the first time in history that a woman has ever held such a job. Signed, Becky Goodman Kerr. <laughs> These three young ladies all claim to be, as you heard, Becky Goodman Kerr. Let's start the cross-examination this time with Orson Bean. Orson? Thank you. Number three, why would a sweet young slip of a thing like you wish to grow up and be a meat grader? I mean, didn't your mother ever wonder uh, why you chose this line of endeavor? 
Uh, Daddy's always owned a ranch, and I've been on a ranch off and on ever since I can remember. Number one, it's a team, you said. I mean, do you hope someday to have the, uh, the U.S. Olympic meat grading team and 16 year line up and try and spot the bad lamb chop or something? No, I don't think I have that go. How, how does a, uh, number two, how does a team work in meat grading? I mean, do you all n need the roast loin of lamb or? Uh... No, you all look at different carcasses Whoa. and um, judge their classes. I'm sorry I asked, number two. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number one, uh, why does the uh, United States Department of Agriculture need meat grading? Well, to protect the consumer. Does, doesn't the average, does, uh, doesn't the, don't the meat packers do them, that themselves? No, it's all governmentally done. Thank you. Number two, where do all these various teams come from? Different colleges around the United States. Number three, to help the average housewife, uh, where is the bottom round found in a piece of beef? In the round. Where is that located on the carcass? Uh, on the carcass, it's, it's the part nearest the railing where it's hung. But if you just were looking at a cow, it's the rump. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, what is... Tom Fosden. <laughs> oh, thank you, bud. Number one, how do you know that you're going to have this job? How can you know that you're going to have a job? The first woman in history, what if they say no? Sorry. They've already sent me my telegram and told me. That you're going to work for them. Oh, I think it's great. Number two, uh, Tell me, uh, and all of us, please, the uh, grades of the meat. Now, start with a very, very top grade of meat. What is that called now? Prime. Do uh, you then, agree with that, number three? Yes. Well, I thought that there was something above that now. I thought prime was elevated to that spot because the better went to hotels and restaurants and things. What comes after prime, number one? Uh, choice. There's choice. nothing better than prime? I'm not familiar with it. I'll be hornswoggled. What the... <laughs> yes, you have been. Thank you, Cash. Number two, what comes below choice? Good, and then standard. And then, don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one, what is marbling? Uh, marbling, this is fat that's distributed in the meat. Thank you. Number two, when they hang the meat, uh, does it ever have mold on it? Not usually, no. Oh, I thought Prime did. Uh, number uh, one, where is the Delmonico steak from? A uh, what? Delmonico steak. I don't know. Uh, number two, what is a butcher's fillet? A filet mignon is part of the loin and the tenderloin part of the cattle. Thank you. Number three, what's the difference between lamb and mutton? Uh, the lamb is uh, under one year old, the mutton's over a year. Thank you. That's it. With all the knowledge you've gained, mark your ballots, if you will, panel immediately without any consultation. And, of course, don't change once you've marked. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. Ballots all marked. Very well, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I, I voted for that number one lady. There's a candor about the way uh, the real one sometimes says, I don't know. But, gee, I found this very difficult to vote for because they all <laughs> seem to know, and certainly they all knew more than I did about the meat, so I had a guess that it was number one. Peggy. Well, I just think all the butchers are going to faint when number three walks in as the meat grader, but that's who I voted for. <laughs> Orson Bean. Well, I think the whole thing is an outrage. You give women a vote and... and... <laughs> uh, I voted for number one, though, uh, on the grounds that... Uh, uh... <laughs> She can have to be, I mean, because uh, the others would have studied a little more. Uh, Orson, you haven't got the carcass hanging right. <laughs> no, 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 well, those are the various cuts. Every artist fails sometimes. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number one, and I'm proud to say that the first lady meat grader in history is going to be a beauty, whichever one she is. Well, very well. That's, uh, again, we have the votes all in and the minds made up. This time it's three to one. Three for number one, one for number three. So let's find out now which one of these three young ladies in truth is Becky Goodman Kerr. Will the real Becky Goodman Kerr please stand up? Now, when will you go to work for the governor? February 28th. Oh, you, you, will you finish college at that time? Yes, I'm finishing right now. Two more days. Two more days? <laughs> yes. Wow. 
What, what degree will you take from the A B.S. in animal science. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Elaine Herkus, and I'm an executive secretary for the Pepsi-Cola Company. <laughs> Number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Nancy Bernard and I'm a student at the University of Texas in the 1966 Made of Cotton. <laughs> well, the score shows that there was one incorrect vote and that's worth a solid fat $250. Ladies, thank you very much for being with us and I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed having you here. Good night and God bless you. team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Caspar Edland. My name is Caspar Edland. My name is Caspar Edland. Follow along again, if you will, panel. I, Caspar Edland, was a lieutenant in the Norwegian army when the Nazis took over my homeland. I fled to Scotland, and once there, joined the Norwegian resistance in exile. My first opportunity to help the Allied cause came when British intelligence discovered that a well-defended factory in Telemark, Norway, was the site of the secret German laboratory where the Nazis were working on the development of an atom bomb. The Allies decided to drop nine Norwegian resistance fighters into Telemark. We parachuted in, blew up the laboratory, then discovered to our dismay that the Nazis, suspecting sabotage, had already shipped duplicate equipment to Telemark. Soon the lab was again at work. By this time, the Nazis, for security reasons, decided to ship all their fissionable material back to Germany. To allay suspicion, it was put aboard an ordinary ferry boat. There was only one thing to do, and we did it. We blew up the boat. Winston Churchill called our successful destruction of the Nazis' atom bomb capability the greatest single act of sabotage in the history of World War II. Signed, Caspar Edlund. <laughs> Panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Caspar Edlund. We'll start with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. Uh, I think it's the most exciting story. I'd love to talk to this guy for a long time. Just uh, for starters, number three, how did you know that that uh, fissionable material was in that simple ferry boat? We knew it because we was ordered from England to destroy it. No, I know, but how did they, number two, how did the people in England know that it was in this uh, ferry boat, which was not suspected as of having uh, fissionable material? It was after the operation itself. It was, uh, uh, it, there is a mountain lake up there. And, and the rest of the heavy water, which is used to make that atomic bomb, or was supposed to uh, use that atomic bomb, was in that ferry there. Boy, that a sensational story. Number one, did, uh, were there any, what is a double agent, number one? A double agent? Yes. A double agent, do you know? I think the, the word will tell us what a double agent is. Did they have any in Norway? Peggy Cass. Uh, thank you. Number three, how did you live while you were in Telemark, you know, when they sent you, uh, when the English sent you there, did you get a job or did you live with a family or what? No, we started right away to walk on skis and walk to uh, Riken, where we were supposed to uh, detonate the, the, the train. We knew that when, what day the train was uh, going to uh, go to Tishun, which is a lake and which uh, were the only possibility we had to explode it. I see. But uh, number one, once you blew up the factory and then you found out that they had duplicate material, how long, how long a space was that between those two? Uh, two weeks. Uh, and well, w w where did you stay? I mean, in, did you, in that two week In time, that two week period, how did you how hide? Did you prevent yourselves from being discovered and... and uh, you see, uh, I am from, uh, I am from around Rukin. Rukin is uh, a town just about three kilometers from uh, the laboratory itself. Orson Bean. Number two, how did, how were your orders communicated from England? We had a regular, a regular transmitter. Uh, did you have a movable receiver? Or how did, why couldn't the, uh, the Nazis pinpoint? 
your radio. We, we had we had through the underground. We had we had people who were working uh, in there. I see. Number three. Do the nine of you ever get together, or were there how many survivors of the nine were there? We were all we were all survivors. You all survived. Do you yes. ever see each other still? Yes, we do. Yeah. We Are do. you all from around? R yes. Rinskin? No. One is from Oslo, and one is from two are from ah. Sheen and. All right. Number Bible. one. Who is Casper in the Bible? Casper in the Bible. Hmm. Don't know. All right. Do you know number one? No. All right. That's fair. <laughs> Kitty. We're not all religious, number one. Number two, uh, what were you aboard when you blew up the ferry boat? Uh, no, I was not actually on that job at all. We were, we were nine men who, who, who did that explosion job in the factory. It was another... Another... Uh, 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 keep, uh, some, some of the same group later on. I see. <clears throat> uh, number two, when you, when you blew up the factory, uh, were there a lot of people in it? Or did you do it at night or what? Number three, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, there were a lot of people. I'm sorry to say there were 200 people or more Norwegians which also died. Thank you. Number one, when you were parachuted in, where did you land? We landed uh, in the Telemark, uh, about 30 kilometers away from our goal. In and did, excuse me, number three, did you go on skis then? How yes. did you carry the equipment? On skis, as I said, and, and we also walked some. And that's all the time we have. It's time for you now to take your own ski poles and mark your ballast, if you will. Mark them at once without change, as usual, and no consultation. Just vote for number one, number two, our number three. Ballots all marked. Very well, Tom. For whom did you vote this time? Well, I honestly, uh, I don't know why the, the, the fact that he didn't know who Casper in the Bible was threw me off so badly. I know who Thomas was in the Bible, uh, but I still voted for number one. Peggy. I never heard of Casper in the Bible either. Oh, you didn't? No. Was he one of the three wise men or something? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> that, that came out of my brain. I voted for number two. I just think it's number two, that's all. Orson, say three Hail Marys. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for uh, number one because it seemed to me he was evasive when Tom asked him what is a double agent. And if he were one of the fakes, he would have been anxious to tell that, even if he didn't know it. Kitty. I voted for number one. Uh, I mean number two, I'm so sorry. <laughs> You've been brainwashed. <laughs> I voted for number two, as you can clearly see, because uh, I think he had the face of a man who would do that kind of a thing, and I liked his answers, and I think it's number two. Very well, evenly divided this time. Okay, let's find out whether we've hit the truth on the head or not as we learn which of these gentlemen is, in truth, Caspar Edland. Will the real Caspar Edland please stand up? <laughs> Incidentally, Caspar Edland's remarkable story of sabotage will soon be released as a motion picture. It stars Richard Harris and Kirk Douglas, and is called the Heroes of Telemark. Oh, nice. So we'll all be looking for it. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Sven Arneberg. I own and operate the Blue Jay Restaurant in Passaic, New Jersey. Thank you, sir. Number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Eric Muller, and I'm part of an Adasio team called Pulley and Tallow. We took the score to find that there were two incorrect votes. And like the first round, as I say, that's a 50% fooling job and so a good one. Twice $250, total there for $500, gentlemen, that you take along. You also take our sincere thanks for joining us this evening. It was a thrilling story, a wonderful one, and we thank you for what you did. Good night, and God bless you. We can be justifiably proud, I think, of the fact that on, starting on January 20th through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, our boys in Vietnam will be able to see our show, oh, Tell oh. the Truth, every week. Hey, that's great. Well, we have time for tonight's
Good night to all of you. Don't forget to join us at the same time next week. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon in the daytime show. And in the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Good night. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotman production. been brought to you by Dristan Nasal Mist, the decongestant nasal spray that gives you deep relief from sinus congestion and head cold distress. Dristan Nasal Mist. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program pre-recorded. <laughs>